All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, another episode of In Focus Podcast. I've just kind of ran with that. I don't know if that's really good, but that sounds good. We have a special guest today, and I, I, I think I said it last time, but the last guy looked like The Rock. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I was kind of trying to like flex and act like I had The Rock on the show. But we have Munchies here. He's, he's a Thanks for having me, man. local business owner. I mean, this guy's got, I wish I had the following this guy has. Like, I have people that support me and, and always help me out and refer me people. But this, you know, I have like a tribe. This dude's got a freaking village. Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. It's a blessing, man. You know, I just feel like uh, I built a brand and people just kind of, you know, I think you got to be nice to everybody. I think I'm, you know, everywhere I go, I say hi to people. You know, I don't think yeah. that I'm better than anybody. And, you know, it's kind of be, you just humble yourself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think that that's why I have a cool little following of people that, they, they, you know, they fuck with, with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and I, I get that a lot from people. People are always like, man, you know, he's very humble. Yeah. I think they, because people see the success that you've had, um, they expect something different. Yeah. But when people meet you, they're like, he's very nice. He's very humble. Yeah. I try to say hi to everybody, you know, even if I don't recognize you, like we were talking about earlier, <laughs> even if I don't recognize you, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'm good with faces and bad with names, but it's just because every day, oh, hey, how's it going? And, you know, you meet new people and I just, so I just, everywhere I go, even when I walk into the restaurant, people are like eating. Yeah. And then they stop eating and then I just feel bad. It's like, no, no, like you don't have to get up. Like, you know, yeah, like, you're you know, good. Eat, eat your food. Yeah. I'll talk to you later, you know? Yeah. You're like, you're like, I know I saw, I saw you saw me in that cool video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. RP3 video. Oh, RP3 video. Yeah. But, um, so basically, you know, on this podcast, I just, I just want to know, obviously I know you personally. Yep. Um, we have, our dogs are named the same. Yep. You know, our daughters go to the same school. Our daughters go to the same school. Yep. So we're kind of on the same path. Um, but I just want to know, like, cause me personally, I do know you. Obviously, I love your food, restaurants, the shit. Thank you. But I don't even know your story. I kind of yeah. know your story. I feel really like it's private, man. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, I mean, well, you know, I'll give you the first. I'll give you the first. Uh, so when did you start? Uh, two thousand. Well, my dad had a restaurant. My dad bought his first restaurant in '97. Um, started as a manager, and then worked his way up, and I bought a, the Chinese guy sold the restaurant. It was a Chinese restaurant. It's called China Bull. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right by the hotel. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. well, there was one. There was one in here. The guy had three. Oh, okay. There's one in San Luis, one in Santa Maria. My dad started the one in Santa Maria, worked his way up to the one in Santa Barbara, and then ended up buying it in '97. Nice. So, as a child, every weekend I didn't have a chance to, you know, everyone looks forward to the weekends. My yeah. weekends were at the restaurant, you know, standing on a milk crate, uh, taking orders and like helping out customers, taking out food. Yeah, that was like my whole childhood, like up to like. 16 17 oh so that's, that's like your high yeah. school job everything yes yeah yeah. yeah yeah so i learned the in and outs of a restaurant just from a little kid you know what to do what not to do food costs labor like i knew it all yeah yeah and i just look up to my dad a lot and so like 2015 came around and my dad had the restaurant and my dad would close at nine my dad would close at nine yeah so i t you know i had an idea and i was like hey dad like how about when you close at nine I open from nine to two. Yeah. And he was just like, open what? And I'm like, you know, just, you know, let me do my own thing, you know, and yeah. let me, let me figure it out. And, you know, I ended up working and I did it like that for a while. And that was at the Santa Barbara. China bowl. China bowl. Yeah. yeah. It was like a ghost kitchen before it's time. Yeah. You know, people now have the ghost kitchen where I, I know people that are running three restaurants out of one spot. Yeah. And you don't even know what, you know, they're selling burgers they're selling pizzas, and they just you, you could open a different DBA for each of them with the same address. Oh, okay. So you're doing business as, uh, you know, like a, a you can sell burgers. You have a burger joint, you have a pizza joint, and you have a pasta joint, all out of the same location. People don't even know. Oh, that's. And crazy. then you just order on DoorDash. You could order from a pizza spot, and then your wife orders from a from a burger spot, and they're coming out of the same spot, and you have no idea. So that's kind of cool. So yeah. yeah, like basically, you have your restaurant. And if you're like, oh, well, you know, yeah, I want to start a pizza place. I want to start this. Yeah. You, you could just do it all online. Yes. And yeah. just deliver. Do it online. Deliver. People wouldn't even know. You have so. a restaurant. Yeah. And you just help, <coughs> you help the homie pay the rent. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you if you let someone else do it. So I was doing that, too, with my dad there. So I had, you know, he had his, his restaurant in the daytime. And I opened up mine at nighttime. Some on menu, bro. I had, like, five items. Yeah. Literally, like, I, I, I spent some money on Vistaprint. And I printed maybe, like, a thousand little flyers. Yeah. And I remember going to like all the apartments and leaving flyers on all the doors, and they, they said no. They said no soliciting, right? So yeah. I used to start at the sure. third floor and yeah. work my way down. And by the time I got to the bottom, the managers would be like, "Like you can't, 
you can't be here, you can't be leaving flyers. But I had already done the whole fucking the top two floors, so yeah. I didn't care, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I did that all down Oceano, Barranca. There, all the streets are by City College, and I, I just I put in the, the all the all the work, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. you know down there just for three hours a day, just putting flyers out, and then I opened up uh, on my anniversary, which is uh, September 21st, which uh, is after a year or. Or how many years did you do the did you do the flyer thing? I did flyers every all the time. So, uh, but after you do the, the ghost kitchen and you actually open up your first location, what was that time frame? Oh, okay. So, I got into some trouble. Yeah. Right. Um, I ended up getting arrested, and I had to do house arrest. Yeah. So, I ended up um, going to the Earl Warren Showgrounds to do uh, like community service and stuff. There oh, I had yeah, an ankle yeah. monitor on my foot. Yeah. Right. So they have at the showgrounds they had six kitchens there, right? So. You know, p- people were doing like the the gym lunches, like where you they make lunch and t- yeah. You know, everybody yeah. had their own things up there doing their own thing. Yeah. So, um, I was there for maybe about two years working. I would go in at six in the morning to about one in the afternoon. Dang, putting yeah. them getting your hours written off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 I still I still had the munchies at my dad's place. Yeah. While I got arrested and all this type of stuff, yeah. so. Um. I was still doing that at my dad's, but I was at the showgrounds with the ankle monitor on. Yeah, to, yeah, you know. Yeah. So um, the CEO there, his name is Scott Greaves. He was a great guy, man. He was he was, he's retired now, but he was he gave me my first shot, you know. And um, there was a a kitchen down there at the showgrounds. Um, they used to sell f- uh, fried chicken there. Yeah, I forgot what it was called, uh, but the guy didn't do too well there, and um, he ended up abandoning the the, the the location and he left the restaurant equipment there. He left everything there. And I asked Scott. Scott would do his rounds every morning. He would walk around the whole showgrounds every single morning. And um, I finally had enough courage to go up to him. And be, hey, man, you know, is that is that place available down there? And he's like, is it for you? And I said, yeah. And he's like, oh, you're too young, man. I was probably like, I don't know, 21, 22. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, man, like, you know, you're too young. And I said, what do you mean? Like, I got money. I, I, I could pay you. Uh, let me pay you. I'll pay you two months in advance. Yeah. Just let me move in. Let, let me Let me show you that I could do it. Yeah. You know, give me a three-year lease. And he's just like, no, 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 no. So I kept bugging him about it. He was on edge about it. And he's and then finally he came to me and said, you know what, I'll do month to month. Oh, okay, cool. And I was like, oh, month to month, you know. I was like, okay, whatever. Gave me a shot. So then I moved from my dad's place on the east side of Santa Barbara. I moved to the showgrounds. Yeah. And then that's when I finally had enough money to, you know, get my own stuff. And then that's when I blew up. That's when I, I pushed hard on the Google ads. I pushed hard on the Yelp ads. And that's where I really kind of just was on my own, which is kind of sad because my dad, you know, I had my dad. My dad had my back the whole time over at this China. But I was there for about a year Yeah, at his restaurant. But I finally was able to kind of step on my own and kind of do my own thing at the showgrounds. That was kind of a big step for me. Yeah, I mean, and especially, I mean, if you think about it, your overhead was probably super low. Oh, yeah. Your dad, right? Yeah, yeah super and, low. And so now yeah. you got to freaking pay rent, yeah. electricity, water. Yeah. I mean, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, what did you, how did you, I mean, that's like, you know, a lot of people would be, would have been fearful to do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I was. I was, yeah. you know. But like, and most of the people that would go to China, but were just like, my friends, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. I had yeah. a lot of support from my friends. Shout out to my ho- all my homies, but yeah, they would you know come to munchies and just kind of they would go work out and then come eat munchies at ten o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. but at this new spot, it's when you know I actually was able to put a sign on one of the busiest streets there at the showgrounds. Yeah, I remember that. And you know, I I, I made a website. You know, I did online ordering. That's where I actually went like a hundred percent, like all in. You yeah, know? every single dollar I made, I put it back in again. You yeah, know? you weren't you weren't out here. Uh, just blowing out every dollar you made. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So <clears throat> I was there, and um, I started doing horse shows. I worked really hard. That's when I actually put in all the work right there, man. I I remember I had horse shows. They used to do horse shows at the showgrounds where they would have Arabian right, horses. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. So the horse shows would be from 6 in the morning to about 4 p.m. So I was doing the horse shows, just working all day, grinding out, just cooking, so busy, thousands of people would go to their shows. Yeah, and then I would give them flyers. That's how I would get my name out. Give them flyers for every single order that I cooked. I would give them a flyer, and I was there slaving over the stove. You know what I'm saying? I never, I never felt like I needed to hire cooks to. You know, I feel like it, you know, if if I'm putting out this product, I want to be the one to make the food. I want to make sure that it's going out good. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If yep. anybody fucks up, it's going to be me. You know? Yeah. And in fact, it's on your business. Yeah. Because people could just get a cooking job somewhere else. Yeah. 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 So I did that for a long time, just like cooking, cooking, cooking. And um, so I would I would open six in the morning to about four p.m., and then 
munchies itself the actual business munchies the late night food delivery was from i changed my hours to 7 p.m from 7 p.m to 3 a.m yeah and then um so i was working like 16 hour days man maybe like, maybe even more sleeping a couple hours and i would do that the horse shows lasted about a week so you know but i was making about five grand a day six grand a day so it's like it's worth it you know yeah, heck yeah and me and my dad were my dad was there helping me out and then i had a cashier up in the front and we we're just grinding it out man so we put in the hard work already, you know. Yeah, dude, that's so. crazy. That's the stuff that people don't see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They think but a lot of people think it's easy. You know? Yeah, a lot of people think a lot of people just think that one day they're gonna wake up and get lucky. Yeah, no, it doesn't work that way, man. No, and yeah. and your business is probably one of the hardest businesses. Yeah, I mean, that's a, the success rate for a restaurant is really low, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's sad because you know I was I was talking to I forgot who I was talking to about it, but like at this this location here, um, at the one in the Rio Grande. Um, I was in, I set myself, I set a budget for myself, yeah. you know, and I said, you know what? I could open this place with 50 grand yeah. or 60 grand or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the painters, I have the people that are going to do the floors. I get the restaurant, you know, equipment myself and I could stage up my own stuff. I had it, had a budget. Yeah. You know, I was all in bro, literally all in. And then like when it sucks, a lot of people are all in and then they open and then they miss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you're left with nothing. Yeah. And you got to liquidate all your shit, yeah. you know? And some of the restaurant equipment that I buy from is from people that like that. Yeah. You know, I bought a lot of my equipment from this barbecue spot that closed down in Santa Barbara. She was all in. She was like 150 grand in. Damn. You know what I'm saying? She's on State Street paying 15000 a month in rent. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just like, if it's your, I just never understood how people are going to open up their own place and then they go that. You don't even have a brand for yourself yet. Yeah. And, you know, you just because you make good burgers or because you make good tri-tip or you make good ribs, doesn't mean that you got to go, you, you know, you're going to refinance your house and take out 200 grand and go open up a restaurant on State Street, you know? Yeah, dude. That's yeah. You, so, I mean, your advice would just be like, you got to start small. Yeah. Yeah. Start small. Maybe not where you want to be. Yeah. But you need to build up to that. Yeah. You got to build up to that, you yeah. know? You know, and I just feel like, yeah, start small. Start small, you know, and just, you know, grind you started, it out. You started... Using your dad's kitchen. Small, bro. My you menu, know? I'm telling you, five items. My first day, I did like eight tickets, and I cried. Yeah. I cried, bro. <laughs> yeah. I cried, and I prayed. Yeah. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And then, like, and then eventually people, like, I think I had a burger. I had a breakfast burrito. I had, like, little things like that. And then people would, would call, hey, can you make this? Since you have this, can you make that? Can you make me a double patty burger instead of a one patty burger? Yeah. Like, little things. Oh, since you have the... Flour tortillas, can you make me a quesadilla instead yeah. of a burrito? Like, I, so like people would, so like I would sell people what they wanted, and then that's how I made my menu just get bigger and bigger and, bigger, like, and oh, bigger. People keep asking for this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna add it to the menu. Yeah, trip Dang, out, huh? dude. You're literally like the people's restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's, it's it's going good, man. You know, I, you know, I was driving back and forth. I miss Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara yeah. was, I mean, it's really good to me. And it's just, I mean, it's just beautiful. Yeah, I mean, every time I'm in Santa Barbara, I'm like. Man, hopefully Andres can uh, run my business. I'll just live in Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but it's it's it, when I'm there, it's a vibe, dude. Santa Barbara's definitely a vibe. It's a huge vibe. I was there for me and I was in high school. Me and my wife moved down there in 2007. We're still seniors, I think. Yeah. And um, we moved down there to go to school. And uh, she stayed in school. And she's smart. And she she's she has a master's. She's working on her PhD. Yeah. Uh, but I went to school and I just you know lost track. You know, I got that first financial aid check and. Uh, you know, I yeah. went crazy, man. Yeah. I think like, I need some new J's. I bought a yeah, I bought a Louis Vuitton bag and shit, <laughs> so I could go to school with a badass bag. You know, so, so I have no money for his book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bag is empty, <laughs> but I look fly, um, dude. That's legit. So, 2015, you started. Yeah, that and you're counting when you ghost. Yeah, uh, yeah. The that's first, the first day I opened, like I said, it was my anniversary. Yeah, September 21st. 2015 was the first day I actually went to business. I had a seller's permit. Yeah. I, you know, I business license. Like, I, that's when I, like, was like, let's do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's a J. And then I remember the fairgrounds. I mean, I remember the fairgrounds parking lot. Oh, yeah. Is massive. Dude, that video, I mean, for me, that was a badass video. That was, that, yeah, that video was blooming. I think we got like 60,000 views, 70,000 views. I just marketed the heck out of it and I boosted that video. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great video. That's like the first one you did for me, huh? Yeah. 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 I don't even know how you, I was like, I, I think didn't we were both like in our prime. Yeah. Well, we're in our prime now. Yeah, I think we're But both I feel primer. like that. Yeah, but that was like when we were both. That was like, like our, like, with the little, that was when the rocket was taking off. Yeah. I would yeah. say that. Yeah. I would say right now we're 
don't know. And we've both been grinding since that day. Yeah. Since that, since when we met each other that that time, and yeah. you did the video. I think since then is when we both just kind of. Yeah. You know. Crazy. Huh? Working, working. You just know. Working, dude, and not not sleepless nights, excuses. bro. Oh, dude. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. You're not not hanging out with your kids, not hanging out with your wife. Not going to Rancho. Yeah. People saying they see you. You know. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't see me at Rancho, dog. I haven't been to Rancho yeah. freaking twelve years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't see you at the bank well, though. Yeah. If you see me at Rancho, I'm bowling with my kids. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, my family, yeah. but yeah, I'm not freaking. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I was there. The showgrounds was a. Good time too. I was there for about three years. Yeah, but the showgrounds ended up getting over my shit. Yeah, but I think you, you know you have some fun friends. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. But I'll, I think I'll in reality you. we I outgrew them. Yeah, not to talk shit about the showgrounds, but yeah. in reality, um, Scott left. He gave me my first shot. He was there for about two years while I was working there. They got a new CEO. Um, his name's Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fuck Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he would just like they didn't want to see me shine, bro. Yeah, they didn't. I said, I don't know what the fuck was up with that guy, but I was there. For, I would pay my rent on time, you know. But he would always just give me shit about like little like there was we had trash bins outside, right? Yeah, and the seagulls would come and take the trash out of the bins, and he would say it was my customers. Yeah, like bro, I got footage. Like I take the trash out every night. It's all put away. If you if your guys would come and pick up the trash in the morning, then you don't have to worry about the seagulls making a mess with the trash. Yeah. But he was just always on my ass about shit. And I was, you know what? I gotta get the hell out of here, you know? Yeah. So there was a Mexican restaurant. Oh, so I went to a barber shop. Uh shout out Uptown Barbers, my homie Eric. He's the one that man, he's the one that made my first shirts. Um, he bought a screen printing machine and he he's the one that made the first munchie shirts. And uh his brother Peter. 42, he has a, a flower sheet barbers out in L.A. Shout out Peter, too. He made my first logo. And um, and uh, he opened up a, uh, his brother Eric opened a barbershop called Uptown Barbers um, on an upper, upper State Santa Barbara on State Street. And next to the barbershop was a taco shop. Yeah. It was called, uh, I forgot the name. But I, went, I was going to get a haircut, and my barber was running behind. So I go to the taco shop to try to get something to eat one guy in there just like cutting tomatoes or something like that yeah and i was like what's up compa hey uh can, can i get a taco un burrito no algo he said, no 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 es, estamos cerrados i'm like why and he's like oh it's because we have a lonchera and that lonchera makes more money than our than our brick and mortar place does so we just use this place to prep yeah the lonchera <clears throat> and then i'm like you want to sell it and he's just like oh no sé deja hablar con mi patrón blah, 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 blah. and i was like um I'll buy it, you know, like let me let me get the place from you, you know. Yeah. Like I'm looking for a place. And then I left them I left them my phone number. And I was like, I'm really interested. Please give me a call. So um, I think maybe like maybe like uh two weeks went by. And I got a phone call from the owner of the spot. Yeah. Which is like, hey, you know what? I heard you interested, you know. And I'm like, Yeah, let's meet up. So I ended up talking to him. I shot him some cash and I got him out of his lease. Then I signed a five year lease there with the five year option. And um, I put about 20 grand into the place. It was really ugly. It was a really nasty orange. Yeah. The electrical cables were all ran with, like, speaker, speaker wire. Speaker wire, remember, remember that? Remember that? Man, yeah, it was so that was bad, crazy. man. Yeah, and, dude, it. like, to go to take a piss, bro, Yeah, like, you had to be a certain weight. Because <laughs> yeah, that yeah. shit was so tight, dog. <laughs> I had to, like, yeah. go, like, sideways to take a, like, to yeah. walk in the little hall to take a piss. Yeah. Dude, I mean, it was, for me, like, obviously the fairgrounds, um, was dope uh the kitchen was a little bigger but like you had to like you basically got your food and you had to bounce yeah then this place to me the kitchen was smaller but it had a, a place, place you could you actually eat, eat in yeah. there yeah which i thought was dope and people would still eat in their cars like they used to at the showgrounds yeah because they would drive from santa maria or they would drive most of my following i think from people were from here yeah you know hey where'd you guys come from oh we came from oceano oh we came from nipomo yeah oh we drove from santa maria so people that would come from over here. So I knew eventually I was going to make my way down here. Yeah, yeah. Eventually I knew I was going to buy a house over here because I can't afford to buy a house in Santa Barbara. Oh, fuck. So eventually I knew I was going to come down here. And, uh, but yeah, so um, back to the, the the taco shop. So yeah, I, I got the taco shop. I went in there. I remodeled everything. I had friends that do electrical. And, um, you know, the electrical was one of the biggest. I spent like 10 grand on electrical. Damn. Put in new lights, new wires, did all this stuff. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so I was there. I think I turned around. 60 days. I gave myself 60 days. So I was set to showgrounds, gave myself 60 days, and within 60 days, I was up and running at the new spot. Yeah, it was quick. Yeah, yeah really were quick. out there grinding. And then that's when I started getting bigger again. 
And then more and more people would come in. And I was, I think, man, I think I grossed, like, when I, when I did my taxes for 2020 and I saw that I sold, like, 1.2 million in food. Yeah. During the fucking pandemic. I know. Like, I was just, like, just uh, amazed. Just, like, proud of myself. And I was, like, yeah. whoa. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm, like, this 30-year-old kid. Or not a kid, but, like, you know, like, yeah. when I first opened, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm, like, and I, I, I hit that first million mark, and I was, like, oh, shit. Yeah, you know how many fucking cheeseburgers that is, bro? Yeah. You man. know what I'm saying? Oh, for real. <laughs> yeah, like, that's a whole lot of fucking food, you know? That's a lot, bro. Yeah. Yeah, because, so, I mean, people are spending, for a single person, what, 15 bucks 15 or less? 15 bucks with the soda is 20 bucks. So, you that's know? a lot of uh, 15 yeah, so, meals. And, you know, when I first opened, it was always, like, munchies. It was munchies, munchies, munchies. And it was for, like, the students, yeah. you know, like, for the stoner kids, for the stoner crowd. Yeah. You know, like me, like when I was in, in college, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then eventually it just started turning, like I started making flyers and then I would take I would take the flyers to the hotels. I would take the flyers to the cottage hospital. I would take the flyers to like all the hotels, like down the beach. Anybody that worked at graveyard shift, even at the jail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. Cause you told me a lot of cops would go. And yeah. All the correction officers would order food. Sheriff. I would have homies that would be in jail and they're like, Hey bro, like. <laughs> These fools are ordering munchies while I'm in here. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, man. So, like, you know, it's crazy how it went from students to actually getting bigger. And then I started selling to, like, the hotels. And I would get in with the people that were at the front desk and be like, hey, if anybody orders food, like, I'll bring you lunch. Yeah. Lunch is on me, you know, if you're ever hungry. But if anybody calls from their room down to the desk and they ask you where they could get some food at, munchies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like munchies, munchies, munchies. So I always pushed it, gave them a, fuck, a free hat, yeah. free shirt. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, it's a, I think that's another thing, too. Like, I'll spend 3000 4000 on merch. Yeah. And my pops be tripping on me because I'd be giving that out for free. Like, and he's like, Mijo, like, you got to sell that shit. Yeah. But it's like that. It's free advertising. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know how many times I've gone to the mall or I've gone somewhere and somebody's wearing my shirt? Yeah, you don't even oh, know who they are. Yeah, I don't even know who they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's just like, but that's, it, it feels great for somebody to be wearing your stuff like that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, So, and then somebody will see it and they're like, oh, what's Munchies? And then look up the Instagram and then you get another, and that's how you get another follower. For me, a $20 shirt is cool if I get another, you know, five, 10 extra followers. Yeah, you know? I think so. And I think, I think so. Like now that I'm, that I'm listening to you, I mean, you had the reason why you have success is because I feel like you hit it from both angles. You did, you do like modern day marketing, which is which is like you know what I do. Yeah. But you also and, and of which I've also done. What I'm gonna say now is you've done guerrilla marketing. Yeah. Like you fucking went out into the trenches and yeah. fucking knock on doors, and I used to do that shit too. Yeah. Knock on doors and and do that kind of stuff, and you combine that with. Uh, social media and websites yep. and all that. I haven't done that in a long time, like with the, fly, really with the flyers, but I yeah. swear, man, I would wake up in the morning and just like from like nine to like 12 in the afternoon because I knew nobody was home. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to scare people by knocking their doors or like, so like I would just stick the flyer in the crease of the door and the door frame. Yeah. And I would stick flyers and I, and I would take like, my goal every day was to just pass off 500 flyers. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it, I found a plug where I was paying maybe like five cents a flyer. Something oh, like shit. that. Yeah. So, or even seven cents, I think it was. And I would just put flyers on anyone's door. And yeah. then I, literally I would start from the third floor and work my way down and work my way down. And I would knock out a whole apartment complex. It's huge, huge complexes yeah. for all the students right there on, on Cliff Drive and like by City College and all those streets there, man. I would hit them all just like. Boom, boom. Dropping off at Freebirds. Yep. And then, yeah. It's, <laughs> and and even, even, if, even if out of those 500 flyers that you passed out, even if. 50 or 30 or 20 of those people would call me that one night to yeah. order food it makes my whole day i mean you probably paid for all your flyers yeah exactly yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah, yeah. basically yeah it, it took care of itself um well i mean that's probably one of the things you have versus the other people that that, that you you buy their equipment from yeah is that you're like you don't have too much pride to go out on the street and fucking no, knock on someone's door like i don't yeah you know, if, you know if, you're gonna do what it takes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's one thing you know i get Go out there and do what it takes to just come back home with the bacon, you know? Yeah. And that's one thing, too, man. Like, uh, you know, I, th I was blessed to, you know, if you have a significant other, man, that's sometimes holds you back or they want to just be at home, like, watching TV or, like, you know, yeah. just cuddling all day, you know? Yeah, you have a strong woman, man, that lets you go out and, you know, she, ho she holds the house down while you go out and make the moves and come back with some money, man. Like, that's that's another thing, too, man, that yeah. sometimes, like, people want to open a business, and then, but they don't put in the work because they're at home because they're, 
their old lady doesn't even let them go out and you know make some money, man. Make some money, you or know? just or just fucking doesn't even believe in you. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, they don't want to, um, you know, they, it's just like you need someone that's gonna basically back you up. Or if they're not gonna back you up, you just need to be like, I yeah. don't really care what you think. You can She's bounce. never doubted me, bro. Yeah. She's never been like, no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's never. Like that's that's a good th- woman, yeah. You know? And that's how my mom was with my dad. Yeah, she never doubted my dad. Just let him do his thing. Let him do his thing, man. Like uh, whatever single penny my dad would make, or it just invest it back into like you know. Imagine my dad bought his first. My dad bought his first restaurant in ninety seven. Yeah, he bought it for a hundred and ten grand. That's a lot of money back then. Yeah, he said that I was like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of money yeah. back then. And that was like mo- he said like, that was most of my savings. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Me and your mom both worked to get that money. Yeah, another woman would have been like, no, like you know, we're going to use this money that? to go back to El Salvador. And that's where my parents <laughs> are from. We're going to go back to El Salvador and build a house over there. And we're going to move back, you know, yeah, or whatever. My dad's like, I bought my first restaurant, you yeah. know, and I, you just got to take a risk. So, yeah. you know, yeah, she's never doubted me, bro. You know, she's always been like, you know what, whatever. She knows that, you know, my, my best interest is my household. Yeah, you know what I'm saying my Make babies, sure the kids are eating, my babies, her, the house, the dog. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, I think that's one of the biggest things is to make sure that you have someone that's supporting you and holding down the house while you're out making that money, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think you got to make sure your home life is like on lock, too. Like, I mean, it's just going to make your life easier. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's already hard. Yeah. Like, you know, doing what we do and just trying to drum up business, this and that. And you got to have your head in the game. Yeah. But if, if your life at home is not like um, good, then it's just that'll distract like, you from the rest. Yeah, yeah now yeah, you're yeah. all mad. Your girl's texting you. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, I'm trying to. Have yeah, I'm glad I don't, deal, I don't <laughs> deal with any of that shit, man. Thank God. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> so one of the things that I like to, I talk to about I talk to other entrepreneurs about is, you know, you're successful. What stops you from starting another business? I feel like a lot of people do that. Yeah. They get. I mean, maybe some of them don't even get any. It's because success. It's because uh, sometimes people spread themselves too thin. Yeah. And I've seen it over and over again. Like, it's like if I, people are like, oh, when are you going to be much used to Santa Maria? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm in a Rio Grande. If you, you can't drive 10 minutes and, you know, you yeah, know, but like good. opening another place is more overhead, more, you know, like more, just more stress. Yeah. You know, if I ever open something else, which I do want to, yeah. um, if I could save up enough money to open a bar oh, yeah, yeah. or open a taco shop, yeah. taqueria. Something like that, or my East Coast spot, whatever. Yeah, I mean, but it would never be another Munchies. No, yeah, no. Yeah. unless I franchise it. Yeah, but it would never be. Why well, open the same thing twice in this within ten minutes of each other? And I think that's one thing where you're gonna starve one of them out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you end up using money from one spot to pay for the other spot, and then you end up with nothing. Yeah, so basically, you're just gonna starve it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was, I always just feel like you know people want to be like they want to own. I'm a video production guy, and then I also fucking do this, and yeah. I also do that. And I feel like, for me, I feel like they're just trying to find which one's going to pop yeah. versus, like, finding which one is their passion. Like, At this spot here, man, I'm all in. Yeah. I'm all in right here, bro. Like, I just, I'd rather just, that's why, I, if I sold the one over there in Santa Barbara, I could focus 100% on one spot, and I know that it's not going to fail. Yeah. If I, if I put out good food, good energy, I'm sure that, it, God's not gonna fail me, bro. I'll, no. I'll be good. You yeah. Know? If, if 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 I'm doing things maliciously or doing things in a bad way or doing bad business, then I know that it's just bad karma. Huh? Yeah, bad karma. Bad energy. Bad energy, bro. You yeah. you get back what you put out. Yeah, for sure. Always, always, dude. And yeah. and I, I mean, I've been there. I've ate there and I've filmed there. And when I'm, I think the last time that I was there filming the bar video, which was you know pretty hot yeah it was pretty hot <laughs> good job on that man. Oh, you did yeah. a good job on that shit um all of them you, ne- you never miss man <laughs> come on dog I'm, tr- I'm jordan bro yeah <laughs> yeah you're jordan on overtime baby um but what i noticed is you check what people that are eating and then you go back in the kitchen and make adjustments yeah oh yeah 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 how could you do that if you're fucking roofing a house because you're a roofer too yeah you own a roofing business like i, I feel like you have to be there to watch the details yeah yeah and that's why I'm there every day. And sometimes I don't have to be there every day. Yeah. But I like to be there every day. Yeah. And I like to see how the food's going out. People just don't eat. People eat with their eyes as well. Yeah. The food has to look appetizing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I want my food wrapped a certain way. I want it to be pickles, lettuce, tomato, then the patty, then the grilled onions. You know, everything has to be exactly the same way. Consistent. Yeah. yeah. Whether you go there on a Monday or a Friday. Let's say you go there on a Monday, you get a, a burger. 
right? And then he loved it. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. fucking like, you know what? It's Thursday. You know, I'm gonna go back again. That burger was really good. Yeah. And then instead of having Juan there, I have Marcos there or whatever, some yeah. other guy. Or and then one guy makes it different to another guy, and then you're yeah. like, this burger does not taste the same. Yeah. It's just so different. for me, it's like it has to be the same way. It doesn't matter who's making it. Yeah. And that's hard to do. Yeah. Consistency, right? In so that's why food. I'm able to be there. And you know, watch the way the food's going out. You know, yeah, that's one of my biggest things. You guys are open right now, huh? Eleven thirty. One, one, yeah, yeah, I've been open for about an hour and a half. Ooh. I have a good little. And then now it's like now I get to do more of the back end stuff where I'm meeting vendors, and you know, meeting the people, networking, mm-hmm. and, and I never really had a chance to do that before. Yeah, I have, like I said, told you earlier, I have fourteen employees. And that's just the whole thing within itself as well. It's dealing with all these people, you know. Um, but I've been blessed. I've been blessed. They're all they're all good cool. people, man. Yeah. They're, they're all nice. They're all on time. They all work. They all greet my customers. It's hard to find, for sure. But you know, I think also another thing is you get what you pay for. So yeah. you know, if, if you pay, if, if you're paying people minimum wage, you get minimum wage at work. Yeah. So I think that's also another thing where sometimes restaurants are scared to pay a little bit more because oh my labor's going to be high or whatever. But you get. You get better response from your employees if you pay them a little bit more money. Yeah, yeah, and the tips they get tipped really good too. And so. those those tips you let them keep them one hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. This this cool this POS system that I got uh, it's called Toast. Shout out to Toast. They did my payroll and they do all my back end stuff, and um, they're able to some, like let's say if me and you, me and you are working a shift, the way that the the system is is we're clocked in we're clocked in that day right. So yeah. whatever orders me and you are taking. It'll split it between us oh, for that cool. day. Oh, nice. yeah. So it's in a big tip pool. So at the end of like, I pay every, I pay bi weekly. Yeah. So sometimes there's like four or five grand tips in the tip pool. Right so now. the way that the way that the system does it, it breaks it down to whoever worked what certain day, and then it'll, it already it'll, knows. Yeah, it'll automatically adjust it for them. So that's pretty cool. So you don't even got to do the math. No, it already knows. No, hey, yeah. you work Monday, Wednesday, Thursday on um, these times, and yep. that's much money you it's got so on great. tips, and you that's know. your shit. And that's also another thing too is like if you could pay for convenience. When you get to the point where you could pay for convenience, because I used to have handwrite these checks to these guys yeah. back in the days, you know what I'm saying? And I used to have to calculate certain things and calculate my sales and have a sell sheet, and like just because I didn't want to. Not because cause I didn't want to, but because maybe I couldn't afford it or Got whatever. And then once you start making more money, then if you could pay for convenience, pay for the convenience. So that way you could focus on something else. Yeah. So I, I pay Toast, I don't know, like 300 bucks a month or whatever to do payroll and to, you know, just to do my back end. Yeah. And 300 bucks is, you know, it's something, I mean, but it's like whatever. You know? It's 300 bucks, but at the same time, like you said, you get a network. Yeah. You know, you get to sit here with me. Yeah, sit here with you and, chat. you know, yeah. I'm sure people are going to watch this. Yeah. And it's just more... Uh, marketing is just, yep. you know, people knowing who you are and, you know, people already like you, but they're probably going to know- like you even more. They can yeah. relate to you. Or they can hate me right now. Yeah. Like, fuck they're they're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to know that, you know, you weren't just like some kid that, you know, dad had money and oh, yeah. here's, I'm going to buy you a restaurant. Yeah, nah, yeah, they yeah. know that you yeah. freaking went out there and handed out flyers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. Your dad gave you the knowledge. Yeah. The restaurant and, knowledge. You know, and there were some times where I wish I could have gone on the weekends with my friends and you know, playing shit, but I was there, you know, working with him, and honestly, man, I don't, I don't regret it. I don't no. regret any of it, man. At that time, you know what I'm saying? Man, then, you're a big mad back then, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, back then, yeah. Hell yeah. But, you know, and, you know, a restaurant could also be a burden on people's families, too, you know? Yeah. I remember my dad just, he was in Santa Barbara, so we grew up in Santa Maria, and he would always be gone working, yeah. you know? And there's times where, you know, he'd get off late, where my dad would work 12-hour days. He'd open at 11 and close at 10, and, you know, he was so tired, he didn't want to drive back. So we had a little attic at Chinabowl. There was a little attic on the top. And um, he had like a little little bed there. And sometimes he would just stay there, you know. That's crazy. And then, you know, my mom would just hold down the fort. I mean, he and my dad would come back home every couple of days or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, it, it could also be a burden as well, too, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I learned from him on how to be there for my kids. I You know, be there. Be there for your business and be there for your family. Be there for your kids, you know. So yeah. any little time I could get away from the restaurant, two, three hours, you know. Go hang out at home with my family. Pick them up from school. Chill. If I could, you know, go out and have dinner real quick with them and then go back to work right after, you know. Yeah. And also now I could afford to go on little vacations and do things here and there, you know. We're going to Big Bear in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, f- like family and friends, you know, all the boys. Yeah, so, you know, if you, you know, I try to do little things like that. Even if it's for two, two, three days and leave and come back, you know. Yeah. Because then, cause then what are you doing it all for, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're not gonna be here forever. Yeah, so might as well take advantage, at least responsibly. Responsibly, yes. Take advantage. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you don't want to. You know, I'm sure you could 
you could probably stay at a really dope place at, in Big Bear yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, yeah, that's not yeah, the yeah. smart thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, what, um, what advice would you – and this is not even, like, you know, restaurant-related, but just in business in general, if someone wanted to start a business, what advice would you give them? <sighs> just be genuine, you know? Just do – if you try to copy what somebody else does – Man, I didn't even want to put throw people under the bus, man. But around town, man, I see a lot of munchies this, munchies that. Yeah. You know, you know, and it's not like I own the name or nothing like that. Yeah. You know, I, I you know I have it just for the county. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But San Luis County. But I just feel like, you know, to open another munchies uh, in town, and whether it's whatever different logo, or whatever, but to sell the same shit that yeah. I've been selling. Yeah. You know, I didn't invent deep fried Oreos, but I made them fucking popular. You know, hey, what I'm, I'm gonna tell you about deep fried Oreos, dude. It, before the deep fried Oreos, I was all about the deep fried cinnamon rolls. Yeah, I remember that. And then I remember that. You used remember to get that? them by all the time. Like, hey, I'm gonna shoot a video. Hey, I need a dozen. Let's go. I'm going back home. <laughs> yeah, dude, I tried the deep fried Oreos when you opened this place. Yeah, fire, huh? And they got the deep fried Smuckers too. Uh, I haven't know. tried those yet. Yeah. That's, all right, so next time, yeah, I'll be there. But um, yeah, so just like, you know, and a lot of these places that were doing that in the town, they're not around anymore. Yeah. You know, they were doing like ghost kitchens where it was like something munchies or whatever. And it's just like I've seen three or four spots that were doing that. Just like if it's not genuine and if you're not doing it, you could have named it anything fucking else. Yeah. You could have named it anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you do things out of spite and you do things not Can't genuine, copy. it's not going to work out for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, you have your own craft. Yeah. You have a gift. Yeah. I have a gift. Yeah. Find what your gift is. Open a business, whether it's. If you have a gift with numbers, you know, you want to open an accounting firm or you want to do accounting, start as a bookkeeper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you if, if you love, if you have a gift with cameras and you have a gift with filming, yeah, do that, pursue it. Yeah. You know, I have a f- gift with restaurant. I learned it. It might not be my gift. I went to school. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I have a degree. Yeah. I had a real estate license at once. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not doing any of that. Yeah. So I just feel like if you're genuine and, and, and you do things with your heart and your kind, things will work out for you. Yeah. You know? I mean, also, too, you know, if we, we, we want to talk about the subject of people copying, if you're going to copy somebody, you're always going to be a step behind because you're waiting to see what, what their they're doing. Yeah. So they're always going to beat you. If you're like, oh, f- fucking Munchies doing good. I'm going to open up a Munchies, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to beat that fool. Well, how am I going to beat you? If I'm waiting for you to make your next move. Yeah. And I don't even know the 10 moves you're not even talking about yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dad's always said, you know, the sun, the sun shines for everybody. Yeah. There's there's not, there's not enough room for all of us to make money out here, bro. Yeah. We could all make money. Yeah. I don't care if you have another. Like over there, over there in Santa Barbara, I would just advertise late night food. I would just late night food, late night food. Yeah. I don't care if somebody else opened up a late night food. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, but just don't name it Munchies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just well, you don't. You, I mean, yeah, you don't, don't copy own, my menu. Yeah, it's a you know free market. Saying? People could do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so that's just you know I don't give a fuck. I'll I'll let I'll let let it right out. You know what I'm yeah. saying. I know if I'm doing me, I, I'm gonna <coughs> do my own shit, and I know I'm gonna be okay. And I've been through that too with with that. You know, people that I kind of know or people that are cool with me, you know, start making videos, but like wouldn't tell me like, yeah, I think I'm gonna start making videos. I would just they would just pop up out of nowhere, bro. I used to get so. But her, yeah. In the beginning and after like a few years, I started realizing like, well, it's it, it is easy, but it's not easy. Like at some point, you're gonna get punched in the face. Yeah. And I feel like if you're not really passionate and if you don't want to really make this happen, when you get punched in the face, yeah, you're like, oh, I'm cool, dog. I don't want to do this. Yeah. So people end up falling off. I got a funny story for you, man. So I was in Santa Barbara, and um, this guy, I don't want to say his name, he's a lame, but um. I would see him around much. He's, you know, he would buy food. He was supportive. I went to school with his uh, girlfriend. And um, he always did, like, catering stuff. He always did, like, his own thing, you know? Yeah. He's always just trying to... He's a hustler, you know? I, I, I don't take that away from him. And he told me, hey, if you hear... I already had munchies. I was already popping. But he's like, if you hear of anything, any kitchens opening up, let me know. Yeah. And I said, oh, hell yeah. I got you, bro. I got you. Like, yeah. So I went to go see my... My, I have a couple of homies that their mom owns a Mexican restaurant yeah. and they open in the afternoon and then they close around dinner time or whatever. So, you know, she was doing kind of bad over there. So she was looking for somebody to kind of rent her spot at night time. A ghost kitchen. Ghost kitchen. Yeah. Right. So uh, I call this guy out of the kindness of my heart. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? I found something for you. You know, I'm going to give you her number. Link up. I was doing it more to help out my homie's mom. Yeah. And then, you know, help, I guess I can help him out too, you know. Yeah. This guy gets there. They make an agreement. 
and she makes a deal with him or whatever. He, get, he pays her the first month of rent. A week later, I forgot what it was called, but it was late night food something. Yeah. Open up my same hours, <laughs> did the same shit. And I was like, bro, I found you this place. <laughs> like, how the fuck are you going to do something like that I'm doing like that, you know? Yeah. I was so mad, bro. Yeah. I was petty. I blocked that motherfucker on everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I blocked that too. But he did exactly the same thing that I was doing. It's like, how are you going to do that? Yeah. Like, I, how are you going to go out of your way? I, like, did you a solid. I did you a solid, you know? Oh. But sometimes, you know. But where's he at? He's not doing nothing. Oh, yeah, he lasted, like, two or three weeks, man. Oh, damn, that's yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's it, man. He was... Gone, in and out. yeah. But it's yeah. Just like if you don't, if you do things out of spite, you do things not genuinely. That's what's gonna happen. Well, it's just like malicious, right? It's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know. But if you're out there and you're hearing this, you can still stop by and grub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come by, come visit me over here in the yeah. real grande. But no, no. I'll discounts. give you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's dope, dude. Um, yeah, I just feel like that. And then, so basically, first advice would be like follow your passion, follow your passion, do your own thing. Don't try to copy someone else's business i try to do a lot of yeah so like <clears throat> i tried it like in the beginning i tried to do things for my parents yeah. right like go to school mijo go to school go to school get a degree so i got a real estate license i did it all online went to anaheim took this three-hour test i got a real estate license at like 21 yeah and i tried it but it just i was just like didn't it just wasn't for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I got the I I got my real estate license just for my parents. Yeah. Just so I could get them off my back. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, you know, sometimes even if it's your parents telling you certain things, they know what's right for you, man. But if if you really have a passion for doing whatever it is that you want to do, pursue it. Yeah. You know? Just pursue it and see what it comes out to. Now my parents are really happy that change your tone, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah, now they're really they're really happy for me, man. And, my dad's still with me there every day, helps yep. me out all the time. He's, he's, he's there. My, my second pair of eyes. You yep. know? He's probably there right now, huh? Uh, he, uh, he gets there around two o'clock. Oh, okay, he gets there yeah, whenever yeah. he wants, man. He's always there though. Yeah, like, he's every my time boss. I go in there, he's always like, "When I go in there, I ha for me to see your dad, I gotta walk in the kitchen." Oh yeah. He's standing on the other side of where the orders are at, just yeah. like staring, staring. Just yeah, yeah. And he has my best interest. Yeah, he's always just my pops, him, bro. bro. It, yeah. And sometimes even if we don't mean eye to eye about something, but if, if my dad, hey. Me go watch your labor. Hey, watch this. Watch that. Hey, me go. There's too many people here. Like, send somebody home. Like, you know, like he's he's on me, bro. But he has my best interest. Yeah. Know? Sometimes it's kind of like nagging, but it's just like he has my best interest, man. Yeah, he he, he had a restaurant. He, we just sold his restaurant in 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah. He bought it in 97. He had it for 20 years. Damn, yeah. So obviously he knows what it, you know. He's doing something right. You know. Yeah. He, yeah. And he's 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 been through the good and the bad. Yeah. So he can kind of help shield you. From like really fucking up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. your dad's cool, man. Your dad's your dad to me is just like a homie. Yeah, like he's very like cool. He doesn't like I don't know. I just feel like I introduce him to all my boys. Yeah, you know, there's certain cool. people like, hey dad, this is so and so whatever, and then but there's like hey dad, this is my my my, my compa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, is, this is homie Rob, or this is this guy. This is this guy. Like you know. So I you know I have, you know, uh, my friends are I it's just I only have like ten solid ass homies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That are friends, and I have a lot of acquaintances. People that I see on the street, you know, whatever. Yeah. Shout out to you guys too, but solid people that actually know where I live or that actually come over for family functions, stuff like that. There's only a few, man. There's yeah. not too many of them, you yeah. know. I mean, you don't need that many anyways. No, you don't. Yeah. You don't. And honestly, there's another thing, man. Like, you got to hang out with people, solid people, man, that have yeah. something going for themselves, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have, for example, like, I have all my friends do something, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you have this going for you. I have a homie that, ha I have three homies that have tire shops. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? I have a homie that has a stereo shop, you know, um, the tent shop. Like, yeah. you got it. Uh, you know, my homie has a barber shop. I have three homies. That like, everybody has a business. Yeah. I hang, I try to, hang, you know, and and every time I'm around them, I peep game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They could teach me something that, you know, like, if, if I hang around with fucking losers all day, yeah. they got nothing for me. No. Nothing. There's nothing that you could, I'm going to learn off of them. Yeah. <clears throat> They're just going to be riding your coattails. They're not bringing you any value. So, yeah, I agree with that. I think you got to hang out with people that bring you value. Yeah. And then because you're doing good, you're bringing them value. Mm -hmm. And we all have different life experiences. And you're what you're, What do they say? You're the sum of the five people you're always around. Yep. Yeah, so everybody I hang out with, man, you know, just, you know, they're all they're all business owners. They all got something going on for themselves, you know. And, and I think that's the way to go because you, you can learn off of them, you know what I'm saying? And then you guys bounce off of each other. Like, I have a, a, a little homie that just opened a tire shop right there in AG. And, um, you know, shout out to Coastal Tires. Um, he was just asking me, like, hey, man, like, how do you do this with taxes? You know, like, how do you, 
you know, how do you budget this? How do you budget that? And, you know, we spoke for like a good 30 minutes. We we're at the bar there at Munchies and just sat down and, you know, yeah. he like genuinely came. I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to help people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people don't want to help you. Yeah. They think that just like, if you have questions for me, bro, I'm a, I'm a, and, and, and if I could genuinely help you, I'm going to tell you, hey, like this is how I do it. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But yeah, he had just like basic questions, you know, like, hey, like, you know, if I, you know, mm-hmm. You pay quarterly or you pay every month or like, how do you do this? Or, you know, and I spoke to him for like 30 minutes, you know, and I just feel like, you know, he bounces off of me, but then, then I could learn something off of him next time, you know? Yeah. And I just like, feel like oh, this, this is how we all go. Or even just seeing him, just seeing his come up is going to inspire you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He opened up, um, it used to be old Medina's tires right there in the real grand. Yeah, I know where that's at. Yeah. He's a youngster, man. He's young and he just, he just bought that tire shop. So he's there grinding out. He's there. Sometimes he's there by himself working. I went to go check him out the other day, man. And he was just there like. You know, balancing tires, putting this on over there, like he's just going, Hell you know, yeah. and then, and you know, you just start, you know, you start young like that, man, and you just you, you put in. Eventually, he's gonna put in the work where he's does it for five, six years, where he doesn't need to be changing tires anymore, and he has a whole staff of eight people there, you know. He's out there just building accounts with farmers and stuff. Yeah, so that's 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 where I think, you know, at some point, that's where the upgrade needs to happen. You know, that's basically where I'm at now. You know, I have a couple guys that work with me, and they're able to to kind of basically do like the, the day-to-day stuff. Yeah. And my goal is to basically go out there and build more relationships. Yeah. Because that's where I started in the beginning. I was building relationships. I needed a business. Yeah. And then as time got on, I got busier. I couldn't do it. And then I started hiring people. Then, so now I'm like, I need to go back to step one, build relationships. These guys can handle it. Obviously I'm here every day. Yep. Um, but you got to keep, feeding the beast you yeah. know we i can't rest on my laurels and just think like oh we're good we're making mm. x amount of money i got guys because eventually that shit starts drying up yeah it'll drop again yeah and that's like for example like those flyers i gave you earlier like people can tell me you got flyers you got flyers so then now that i order like five thousand flyers i'm gonna go back to step one i got a new look i got a new spot yeah i gotta go around all, all the Royal Grande area, San yeah. Luis area. I got to go around that whole area in Ipomo, yeah. Oceano, and just pass out flyers like I used to. You know what I'm saying? We're doing good. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't I, matter. Yeah. Like know, I'm new to the location. And some people, you know, you can't make everybody happy in general. So some people are going to come. Some people aren't going to come. Yeah. It's fine with me. Yeah. You know, like um, I, last Sunday was like a Niner, Niner and 40. It was a Niner and a Raider game. Yeah. And, you know, people were in there with jerseys or watching the game, drinking beer. Yeah. You know, and this older, older people came in, maybe like eight of them came in and like, oh, it's too loud in here. You know, like you're not going to make it if, you know, if, if, if you don't accommodate us here, we've been living here for 30 years. And it's just like, you know, Munchies isn't for everybody. The restaurant before you, you still accommodate us and yada, 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 you know, whatever. I said, well, if, you know, nicely, I said, it's Sunday football. This is one of the busiest days of the week. We're selling beer here. We're selling food here. Sorry, I could lower it a little bit for you, but you know, I'm sorry. You know, this it's, is the it's, energy. It's not, it's not, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Yeah. She's like, well, the other restaurants say, well, the other restaurants not here no more. Obviously, they weren't doing something right. Yeah. You know, and so the other restaurant like, didn't have uh, people driving uh, two hours to go eat there like they yeah. do for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just like, you know, so it's just like, I just come back, come back tomorrow. Yeah. Well, no, you know, come back tomorrow. Maybe, you know, I'll lower the Come back Monday at yeah, you know, I'll set a, set a table in the corner for you or whatever, but. It's just, you know, sometimes it's just, you can't make everybody happy. Nah, you know? yeah. And that's one thing, too. It's just like, you got to, I just do me. Don't change yourself for anybody else. Don't don't stop being you because you want to make other people happy. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be me. My restaurant is the way it is. The the, the lighting is the way it is because I like it like that. The music's the way it is because I like it like that. The, what's on TV is like that because I like it like that. And it's just like, and if, if, and if you fuck with it. I love you. Come on by. And if you don't, then go eat somewhere else, man. Yeah, there's plenty of restaurants. And if you feel like you could do it better, you know, people like, oh, you know, if you, you know, they they think they could make better videos than you. They think they make better food than me. Yeah. Open up your own fucking restaurant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Open up your own production company. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, be my guest. Yeah. (laughs) Go ahead. Try it out. I would love the competition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Just so I can have another person to beat. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, man. Um, But yeah, dude. I mean, I think we had a, we covered a lot. Where is your, your new location is in AG. Yeah, up on the Mesa there. Up on the Mesa. Yeah. What's the address? Uh, 2796 South Halcyon. Nice. And um, so I was looking up and down the whole. Yeah, we haven't touched this. We haven't Mm-mm. touched much on this topic. So I was. Wait, hold on. So first of all, why did you leave Santa Barbara? You had a cool little spot. Yeah, I did. 
And I was in my prime. Yeah. I told you, we You're sold 1.2 million yeah. in one month. I was mm-hmm. in my prime there, but I was driving back and forth. I had just bought a house here. And like, I feel like I was kind of not at home with my family. And um, yeah, it was just like, it was cool, but um, money. it was just not like, wasn't really happy. Yeah. You know, I wasn't really like, I wasn't, I wasn't there for bad time with my kids. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, you know, there for dinner time. I just like, it just wasn't, wasn't the vibe, you yeah. know? Yeah. And if I stopped going, then I got to hire somebody to be there in my, you know, to take my place over, you know, like a manager or whatever. Yeah. And then. But you don't have the experience to make 1.2 million. Yeah. So yeah. I got to pay him. And yeah. You're not going to make as much. Yeah, exactly. So I ended up getting an offer from somebody. Um, and he's still running it as much as now. And I don't know how he's doing, but we kind of. I kind of try to tell him how to do certain things, but you know, they're like, Oh, this, this, it's not your restaurant no more. Don't worry about it. Whatever. I got cashed out. So who gives a fuck? Yeah, but yeah. I just didn't want to see it go the way that it's going now. Yeah. I wish it would have turned out to you know go a little bit better. So we could kind of, the deal was that I'll sell you munchies and I'll open up a new munchies and we could kind of, you know, collaborate back off of each other. You know, collaborate. Yeah. You know Maybe on saying? the flyer say, Hey, we have another location over there. Yeah. Or, hey, we have exactly. Flyer. But like I saw him doing some shit sloppy, and you know, I saw him like you know things weren't the way that I, I they used to be. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to see the brand die because I started from nothing, bro. Yeah. Fucking zero. Yeah. You know, like I I got it to get to where it's at, and I didn't want to see just some jackass come in here and just kind of fuck it all up, you know. But in reality, he told me one day, hey, like it's not your business no more. Like fuck it, like mind your own business. Well, if I do good, I do. If I do good or if I do bad, it's not your business. Yeah. All right, fuck you. So whatever, you yeah, know. He wants your help now, huh? Yeah, yeah. Now he, yeah. Now he fucking wishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you should have took notes, asshole. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whatever. I got cashed out. That shit hit my bank account, and I was like, "It's on now." Yeah. Now, you know. Now I gotta be smart with this shit because money goes quick. Oh yeah. So you know, I paid whatever I had to pay to the IRS. They take twenty percent of all your earnings, whatever. Um, and then I had some money left over to say, "All right, I gotta open a business. What am I gonna open? What am I gonna do?" So I was just looking. From like Orchid to Slow. And I was just like, you know, looking myself, like going around everywhere. And I didn't want to go through a broker because they're going to tax me, you know what I'm saying? Keep a a percentage. So I ended up um, going to, somebody told me that this, oh, fuck, I wish I would have known because shout out to you. But someone told me uh, this is Thai place on Main Street. I think I had told you about it. You told me about it, yeah. And um, yeah, they weren't doing too good. Towards towards the end of the pandemic, so whatever people are still doing the curbside dining and all that shit, um, and I go in there and it's the old lady, old, in there with cooking with the wok. Like I love to see shit like that, man. Like she's in there like making some Thai food and shit, and then um probably like seventy something, and then I told her like, hey, I heard that this restaurant might be for sale, or you you know you wanna you wanna retire, and she's just like, yeah, actually I do, and then I was like, okay, well. When you have time or I can come back some other time, we, you know, we could touch base. And she said, um, come back tomorrow. Showed up the next day. I said, well, I said, do you mind if I look around? She's like, yeah. So I went on the roof. I looked over her equipment. Shot out place. It was going to need like 40 grand just to get it back to how I wanted to get. Damn. And then, um, so we spoke numbers the next day. And I told her, you know what? I'm going to come back on Friday. I'll bring you this and this much money, you know, and just leave. Yeah. So I showed up on Friday. It was closed. She didn't even open. She didn't bother to call me. Yeah. I showed up again, like, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday of the next week. And I showed up with, like, we had agreed on, like, 25000 or whatever. I was going to give her just to leave. Leave all your shit here and just go. I was going to throw most of it away anyways. Yeah. In reality, you're buying them out of their lease. Yeah. In reality, I'm paying you this money so that way I can meet your plug, which is your landlord. Yeah. And I can sign a lease. Yeah. You know, in reality, I don't want none of your shit. Yeah. That's the same thing that happened in Santa Barbara. Is yeah. like in reality, I'm buying the taco shop out of their lease. Yeah, I threw away all. all the, I gave that guy like ten grand or fifteen grand at the taco shop. Yeah, in reality, I don't want your equipment. Yeah, it's all shut out. Want, I'm paying you to leave. I'm paying you to leave. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing happened with um, the spot here. You know, pretty much, she told me how much she was paying in rent. She wanted a certain amount of money, and I showed up with the cash. And then she got kind of nervous, like, "Oh, this you is know, getting real." She, yeah, where, like, where did this money come from? Like, what do you do? And I said, "Well, I just sold my restaurant." You know. And she's just like, oh, well, you know, I need you to show me proof of, I was like, I got the cash. You want it or not? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just go. Yeah. And then she's like, you know what? Like, please don't come back. You know, I think I scared her away, you know. Yeah. Some I people, 
talk about it, but when you see 30, 40 bands in cash, and they're just like, you know, that has tattoos on people hands. start getting all sweaty and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck, whatever, lady. You should like, go to the bank to money uh, out for, uh, Yeah, I should have wrote her cashier check. Yeah. yeah. She's like, I think so, they're, uh, yeah, they're yeah. bringing uh, drugs from Tijuana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like on next Friday. <laughs> like on next Friday, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, Miss Ho, what's her name? Yeah, Miss Ho Kim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, so, like, fuck it. So I was kind of bummed out because I had a whole. Main Street, right off the freeway. Oh, dude, that place would have been I money. I had a whole fucking like, man. I had when I when I see something, bro, and, and and I start visualizing how I want things to be. I get so pumped up. I'm like, all right, cool, like let's do it. That place would have been yeah, money. the next day I'm already knocking shit down and I'm on it. So, yeah. whatever. I kept going, and then um, I found this spot on the Mesa. Yeah, in the Rio Grande, and uh, it had been empty for three years, and there was no sign that said for lease or nothing. It was just empty. Yeah. So I went on fastpeoplesearch.com and I typed in the address and I found the names of the owners of the building and then from there I went to public records and then I found out what their phone number is and what their address is and then in San Francisco so like I did the search myself I'm straight to the plug man you know what I'm yeah. saying no yeah. middle man so I found out where they lived at I called them spoke to them and I uh, said you know what like this and this and that I had a restaurant I sold it gave them the whole you know, I, I I already had everything that they needed. I already knew. I've, you know, you know. I, it's like my third, fourth lease I had been signed. Yeah. I already, I, you know, I kind of knew already. And it's way easier to negotiate when you have some money. Yeah. Because in reality, they need you. You don't need them. Yeah, that place has been empty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I set up a meeting with them, and I met with their property management guy. Um, and, and it was like six months of negotiating, just going back and forth, back and forth. It was. Harder to get this lease than it was to buy my house. Put it to you like that. Damn. It was a stack like this big of conditions and things like that. And, you know, I was just fucking, I read that lease like a hundred times over. You know, I crossed my T's, dotted my I's, and I just made sure that everything was super legit, you know? Yeah. And um, they wanted like crazy amount of money every month and a crazy deposit. And I had to do this and they were going to do that. And, you know, just listening to like, things on YouTube or listening to other podcasts, I kind of just like knew like, you know, like I'm going to negotiate this. I asked him for like, it was like, you know what? I went in there and I was like, you know what? This place is like trash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't, it was trash inside. Yeah. But in my mind, I was like, I'm going to come in here. Like, I don't even need this shit. Yeah. It's all, I was like, you know what? This place trash. is like trash. It's, it's going to take me a year to open. Um, you know, whatever. I'll take all this shit out. Like, and I was, I was right. But in, in my mind, I knew it was going to take me three months to open. Yeah. And my mind is a three to four month project. I'm going to come in here, knock all this shit out. I'll be open, sign up for my permits, and I'll be good to go. But yeah. I, I kept telling the property management guy, shout out to Glenn. Sorry, man, I played you full. <laughs> shout out to you. Hey, it's just yeah. business. Not personal, just business. Yeah, it's just business. So I went in there and I was like, you know what? Like, this place, man, like, it's going to need work. And it, it did need work, but I made it, it seem did. like it was just over the top. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I need a year free rent. Like, I'm not going to pay you rent for a year. Cause I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna dump sixty racks on your place here, and why am I gonna pay your rent when I'm not even making any revenue? Yeah, he's like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. And I said, well, take it back to your people. It's not up to you. Yeah. Take it back to your people. Let them know that I want a year free rent, and instead of X amount of money a month, I'm gonna pay you this amount of money a month. Yeah, and I want a longer lease. I want a ten year plus a five year option. Yeah, like I don't want because the thing is when you sign a short term lease and you're signing a month, if, if say if you do month to month or if you do a three year lease, if you start blowing up and they see you blowing up, bro, they're gonna double your shit up yeah so it's just like i've seen a lot of restaurants go out like that too yeah so i negotiated a long-term lease where i was at like a, a so the, he came back and he's like i'll give you this i'll give you that i can't do 12 months but i could do two months free rent and i said no like i don't want it and then uh so I was like, you know what these are my terms take it or leave it here's my number call me back if you fuck change your mind you know yeah. so like two weeks went by and my dad's like oh you fucked that shit up you went in there too cocky you know, they're not going to give you shit now, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and then, like, my money's running low. I'm spending money because I have, I have a mortgage. I have yeah, family, brand new cars, you know. Fuck, my kid goes to private school with yeah, your kid. You cheap. know how that can get. So, yeah. like, we have, like, overhead, you know. Like, I got to make money. Yeah. <clears throat> so, call me back, like, three weeks later. He's like, hey, man. He's like, uh, you still want the place? I'm like, yeah, you going to meet my terms? And he's like, Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. So I went down there the same day. I took him some money for the deposit, shook hands, and the next day I was on it, bro. Started knocking yeah. shit down, did demo. I don't think he was. In, I don't think he thought I was gonna move so fast. Yeah. I went in there and I shook that whole neighborhood up, man. Bro. You know, I had the outside painted with like in one week. I had the inside p painted. I gutted it out, put new floors, 
took out all the old equipment, did all new toilets, new bar, just did everything. Yeah. I did everything. I had Amazon guys every fucking day with like TVs. Cra- yeah, TVs and shit. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toilets. Yeah, toilets. Yeah. <laughs> First thing I did was the alarm system, camera system, because I had shit in there that, you know, I don't want people to, you know, I didn't know the area that well yet. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So I told the guys it'd take me a year to open. And in my mind, I knew in 90 days I was going to be open. Yeah. So I opened in 90, nah, no, like 45 days I opened. Yeah. So I still got like eight months of free rent. Damn, dog. <laughs> Plan. Yeah. So that's how you got to do it, you know? And then eventually, like, in my mind, it's like, I, I dumped this money in there, right? So in the the faster I open, the faster I get my money back because I'm saving the money on the rent. Yeah. So, you know, the faster I get the money back, um, the, the better. I could put it back into my savings, you yeah. know? So that's one thing, too, you know, make sure you negotiate, you know, your lease really good and make sure that, you know, you're able to, do what's good for you, you know. A lot of the times, it's like, and I love negotiating, man. I like going back and forth with people. You know, what I'm saying if it makes them happy, I'm happy. That's just the way you got to do it. You know? Yeah, good business, good yep. business. Dude, that's dope, man. Yeah. So, where can everybody find you? What's the address? Oh uh, yeah, two seven nine six South Halcyon. Uh, we're open every day from uh, eleven thirty to twelve. Um, eventually, I kind of want to do some stuff there. I don't know. Um, I I, I could have events there, like car shows. Yeah. Or something, your car you know? show, you know, got you. Yeah, come through with the car show. I well, can't, that, I, I that can't bring the the Sikamaka trucks, but yeah. I can bring some low riders. Yeah, bring some low riders. Bro. <laughs> I, yeah, once I I've been getting older, so I fuck more with the low riders now than I do then yeah. the Sikamakas. <laughs> Shout out to the Sikamakas. <laughs> hey, they're, I they're, still like my single. Those are homies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but the law across the street from uh, Munchies is the same owner as. The Munchies building. He's like, whenever you have anything, that whole lot you can use it across the street. Oh shit! Yeah, so it's a literally right. It's a dirt lot. Yeah, but it's in the, yeah, we could use a whole lot for anything. Damn. Yeah, he's like, whenever. And then he's like, that way you don't, call it, you don't congest the area here. You could just park across the street, and come walk right across, over. Walk across the little sidewalk right there. Yeah, yeah we'll across we, we, we could have something there. Hell yeah, I'm down, dude. Well, man, you know what? Thank you for your time. Oh yeah, thank I'm you. I'm glad we, you know we went a little longer, but that's oh, my goal. Cool. I think we did like an hour. Like yeah, that. I think it's legit. I'll come man. by whenever you want me to, man. Yeah. What uh, work what the Instagram? Uh, Munchies eight hundred five. Munchies eight hundred five. Yeah, it's on there. Um, yeah, we, we're we're one month open, so you know, come by, check us out. Um, yeah, we're there, turning up, man. Serving Dude. good food, serving beer. We have some good beer on tap. Yeah, uh, meeting all these cool vendors, man. Cool, you know, new people. Getting connected. There's like this, you know, local brewer companies that you know they're doing like Humdinger out in Rio Grande. Uh, these other guys are called something barrel out in Paso. Just meeting new people, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a whole thing within itself, too. People that be brewing their own beer, man. Yeah. That's yeah. a whole other business, huh? Yeah. I'm meeting all the, like, I met the owner of 805. That was really cool, man. He brought over a bunch of stuff and just cool, man. It's just cool to meet, to meet people. That guy, that guy. I like his, uh, I like his beer. I really like, and then this is off of a tangent. We only got 15 minutes left, but I really like Agua Santa. I love their branding. I love their logo. I everything. thought that that was Firestone. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's a Figueroa. Fig, Figueroa. It's Figueroa. But this is what I'm going to say about them. And I don't want to throw shade. Oh, that's cool. But we are in marketing. Yeah, yeah. I think their product is great. I think their their branding is great. But if you go to their Instagram, and if you look at their beer can, yeah, it says Mexican-inspired lager, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Go to their Instagram, Agua Santa. Bro, it's, in no disrespect, but it's all it has nothing to do with Mexicans. Oh, shit. It's all like these hipster white people. Oh man, I'm yeah. Like, At least put a flag up there. Man. Put, put, a, put a Mexican flag. Yeah, I mean, yeah. dude, like, there's. I go to it. There's nothing about their Instagram that says Mexicano. Yeah, nothing. That's something too, man. That people like they try to bite off of a, of a of a race or like you know something. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah At least show some love, man. You know. I mean, make make it make your branding your at least your social media branding. Make your social media branding more Mexicano, dude. Like it's something. Like yeah. I'm telling you, go to it. And it's just like white people. That's the most popular beer. I saw the most of it. Yeah, I know beer. because it looks cool and it's it's good. Yeah. And and the name is char- this cherry the, too. Yeah, yeah it really has a badass name. name. Yeah. Mex- Agua Santa. You know, it has the Aztec, the skeleton. Like, yeah. It's badass. But when I saw their Instagram, I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Like they hooked it up with a bunch of neons. They sent me a bunch of neons. I, I, got, ooh, I got them up for stuff like that. Need, so if you want to sell one, yeah. But you're right, man. I I didn't really think about that. But but I I will still drink it. Yeah, I, I still <laughs> I still think it's good. I still get everything. But if I had if I worked there or if they ever wanted a video, I would be like, "This is what I think you need to do." Yeah, you need to do something to like show. That's I feel like I, not not that I'm thinking like, "Oh, this is this is a rant." I'm thinking like it's kind of like off brand. Yeah, more than anything, it's kind of like off brand. Like I, this is not what I expected. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, you don't got to be like all in the feelers and you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. 
you know, I don't know. Just a little bit of a, I think they just need a just touch. Just some love to the culture, Just I a think. little touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. But their product is a shit, and their branding is a shit, minus their social media. Yeah. yeah. That has a lot to do with it, too, man, like social media. I Sometimes I'd be showing some private stuff on social media, but people like... Like, like I think like you can get a you can get a burger you can get a vibe anywhere else yeah. anybody somebody can get a video anywhere else yeah but they come to you because it's you yeah and I feel like that's why I try to show a little bit of my private life on there you know, I'll show myself out having fun or doing certain things on my on social media but it's because people want to know that you're a real person people yeah. want to know that they're not supporting this franchise and it's actually a small business you know what I'm saying yeah or who's this, this guy a jerk is he cool or yeah. can I relate to him yeah so I do do show a little bit of some. You know, personal stuff on social media. Not not, not too crazy, but yeah. Yeah. I try to stay private, man. But yeah, thanks for having me on, man. All right, Appreciate bro. You. Well, thank you, man. Nothing but love, man. All right, you man, ready thank to know. you. All right.